Welcome to JK Studios. I'm Sweet Potato and you're watching Couch Potato. Today I'm going to be letting you know my top 10 new TV shows of 2017. Before we get started, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and become a part of the Couch Potato crew. And if you already are, welcome back. Let's get right into it. She's so adorable. Okay, so she wanted me to buy her some because she went to middle school and she wanted to be like all the big girls, but it's like a headband. It's like... <laughs> At number 10, I have Raven's Home. This show premiered this year on the Disney Channel, and it's all about Raven Baxter, played by Raven Simone, and her twins, Nia and Booker. This show is a spinoff of the classic Disney Channel show, That's So Raven, which I grew up on in the early 2000s. Raven's Home focuses on Raven's kids, but particularly her son, Booker, who has inherited her psychic abilities. With Booker being just like his mom with powers and personality and the fact that both he and his mom are keeping the fact that they have visions away from each other, of course, hijinks ensue. This show is very nostalgic for me and it's also a great show for the family to enjoy together. At number 9, I have The Magic School Bus Rise Again. This show is another one of my childhood favorites, brought into the present day. I was a little weary about what would happen with this show being remade, but Netflix did an amazing job with it. If I was the same kids that we grew up with on <laughs> If I was the same kids that we grew up on Okay. If I was the same kids that we grew up with on the original, but the teacher is different. The Miss Frizzle that I grew up with has gotten her PhD and is going off to do research. But no biggie because she has a younger sister named Fiona Frizzle, voiced by Kate McKinnon, who is here to take over for her class. The new Miss Frizzle is just as smart. She still has Liz the Lizard as her sidekick. And most importantly, she has the keys to the bus. So the adventures continue on. This show is, of course, awesome for the family and for your little ones to enjoy alone as it teaches them so many things as the original did for us. The only gripe I have about this show is that they touch the theme song. You cannot touch a little Richard thing. And number eight, I have She's Gotta Have It. This show is based on Spike Lee's debut 1986 film of the same name. The show is about Nola Darling, played by DeWanda Wise, and her three lovers, Mars Blackman, Jamie Overstreet, and Greer Childs, played by Anthony Ramos, Lyric Bent, and Cleo Anthony, respectively. The show dropped on Thanksgiving Day and took everyone by storm, causing division amongst everyone. The show discusses sex, monogamy, the stereotypes that women face if they have multiple partners, sexual assault, plastic surgery, and so many more topics. The show for me was a bit all over the place with the subject matter as I don't think that one subject matter was taken from beginning to end, but I think everything that it touched on left a good foundation for a season two to either expand on the subjects or bring them to a close. I think everyone should take a watch and decide what side they're on with the show. And number seven, I have World of Dance. I know, I know. This is a dance show. This is a dance competition show, but so what? It was so entertaining. The show had Jennifer Lopez as a judge and Jenna Tatum as a host. I mean, come on. All of the dancers were from around the world. There were groups, duos, and solo acts. They even had kids, and these kids were dope and hung in there with seasoned adult dancers. The show was a breath of fresh air from all the singing competition shows. I'm actually looking forward to a season two. The only thing that was weird for me was Neo being a judge. Like, since when is Neo looked at for his dancing skills? Other than that, the show was bomb. At number six, I have The Quad. This show was a breakout hit for BET. It stars Anika Noni Rose, Peyton Alex Smith, Jazz Rayco, Ruben Santiago Hudson, and many more. This show is about life at an HBCU, historically black colleges and universities for your, those who don't know what that means. From the perspective of the incoming president, a woman that comes from an Ivy League background, freshman woes, marching band culture, rape culture, and student 
faculty sexual relationships. The show kicked off with a mini movie and took the network by storm. If you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out before season two starts. At number five, I have Dear White People, another series coming from a movie. Netflix adapted this show and knocked it out of the park as well. Unapologetically Black, the show stars Logan Browning of Hit the Floor and Bratz fame, as well as Mark Richardson, Antoinette Robertson, Ashley Blaine Featherston, and many more. Adversely from the Quad, this show takes place at an Ivy League PWI, a predominantly white institution, and follows its small population of black students. This show touches on so many topics that the black community faces, like cultural appropriation, police brutality, operating in white spaces, interracial dating, homosexuality in the black community, and so much more. I know some people took issue with this show, but I truly enjoyed it and think there is so much more to the show. And I think there there is so much more to show and issues to tackle. Side note, there's a funny as hell show within the show that is a spoof of scandal called Defamation. And number four, I have Runaways. This Hulu original series is based on the Marvel comic of the same name. This show is still currently airing on Hulu as of December 27th, so I'm not done watching it, but so far it's dope. It's all about these rich L.A. kids who grew up together but all fell off after the death of one of the kids' older sister. On the anniversary of her death, they all get together to hang out after their individual plans go south and they stumble upon their parents, who are all a part of an organization called Pride, doing something strange that turns out to be a crime. This revelation sends the kids down the rabbit hole of finding out all there is to know about what is going on. But the deeper they dig, the stranger things become, and the harder it is to act natural in front of their parents. I'm really enjoying this show so far. The cast is huge and too many to name, but from the kids to the parents, the acting is really good, and so is the storyline. And yes, there are some powers involved, but more technology than anything. Check it out. At number three, I have Claws. From the moment I saw the trailer, I knew I would like this show because, to me, Niecy Nash can do no wrong. And I just want Karuchi Tran to win. I didn't know what to fully expect from this show, but when I tell y'all, it takes you on a wave of emotions from happy to sad to hysterically laughing to wanting to cry. This show is all over the place, but in the best way. This female cast is so good and well-crafted. They just might be my best female ensemble of the year. The show is about a nail shop owned by Niecy Nash's character Desna and her crew of friends who work there along with her with a new girl, Karuchi Tran's character, Virginia. Well, underneath the normal nail shop exterior is some serious money laundering being done by the girls for Desna's boyfriend, Roller, played by Jack Kessie and the Dixie Mafia. The show has murder, drugs, money, sex, nails, fashion, and all things beauty wrapped up in a down south dark comedy. Like I said, it's all over the place, but you seriously have to watch it to fully get it. TNT, you got a hit, and I'm counting down the days until season two. Number two, I have Riverdale. Now, usually I try to stay away from the CW because it's full of DC comic shows and other things, Teeny Bopper. But I must say that Riverdale was a surprise hit. Yes, it is based on Archie Comics, but it's nothing like that except for Small Suburban Town and the funny names. The show is so good that it premiered in 2017 and is already on its mid-season finale for season two. That's what I like to call supply and demand. The show stars KJ Appa as Archie and Cole Sprouse as Jughead. And it's somewhat of a crime drama, murder mystery, Pleasantville-esque show. Both seasons one and two take you down a wild ride of whodunit, and it's great from beginning to end. So I'm telling you, as someone who likes to binge TV shows, go watch Riverdale. There are 21 hour-long episodes out there waiting for you, and the second half of the season will be right back on Wednesday, January 17th, 2018, for your viewing pleasure. My honorable mention is the new edition story that aired on BET. 
The only reason that this is an honorable mention is because it was a miniseries and not actually a show. But this show was about the rise, fall, and reunion of the singing group New Edition. The child actors were amazing in their roles and the adult actors were amazing as well. This movie broke all of these actors' careers and even sent the actors on tour with the real New Edition. The show had so much attention to detail and reenacting the music videos and having the actors really sing in the film. Like, it probably was one of the best things I watched in 2017. And finally, my number one new TV show for 2017 is The Gifted on Fox. Another Marvel property hitting the airwaves with a bang. The show follows a family of four where the two kids played by Natalie Allen Lind and Percy Hines White have mutant abilities and after causing an incident at a school dance are now on the run from Sentinel Services ran by Jace Turner played by Kobe Bell of the game fame. The family gets away but ends up with a group of other mutants who are on the run and helping other mutants to safety in Mexico. The show is full of twists and turns and, of course, action. And you guys, the show took a little break and will be back on January 1st, 2018 to give us three more episodes for season one. So you still have time to catch up before then because where they left us off at was so crazy. I had to watch that ending like five times. This show isn't even over, but it's definitely my favorite new show of the year. So tell me what new shows you like this year. Did you agree with my list? Were there any shows that I missed? Let me know down in the comments. Remember to thumbs up the video and click the notification bell to be the first to see everything that we post. And if you like this video, please be sure to check out our favorite movies of 2017 and the worst.